Welcome to the third of four presentations I'm doing on department store camera lenses. Today we're looking at the camera lenses that were offered by JC Penney's. Now JC Penney's was one of the four retailers we're looking at that include Montgomery Wards, Kmart, Sears, and Penney's. And of those four, uh, only pennies sort of remains in its original form. You still see pennies at malls, the occasional standalone store. You don't see any Sears or Kmart's or Montgomery Wards with brick and mortar offerings like you do pennies. Uh, that being said, pennies is a mere shell of its former self. Uh, they, they are much diminished uh, from their heyday in the mid 20th century. But they do have a long and uh, great history. It goes all the way back to 1907 when James Cash Penny purchased three department stores in Wyoming. And by 1920, he had turned that into over 120 stores. And he continued to grow throughout the century through acquisition and through organic growth and by the 80s he was one of the largest retailers in the United States. And during their growth years, Penny sold everything. They sold auto parts, they did auto service, they sold rifles, they sold motorcycles and mini bikes, and of course they sold camera equipment. And that's what we're going to look at. By, by the mid 80s though, the mid 1980s, J.C. Penney's was starting to trim back their offering. Uh, gone were the uh, the rifles, gone were the mini bikes, the auto parts, the auto service centers. All of that was gone, and they were focusing more on their core business. And by the late 80s, they had kind of exited the camera and photography business also. But during that time, they they went to market similar to Sears and Montgomery Wards with brick and mortar retail stores and also through a robust catalog business that they had. And they sold, they sold their photography equipment in both locations and it, from their catalog and also at their retail outlets. Now, unlike Wards and Sears and Kmart, Penny's not only sold their own products, their own branded camera equipment. They also sold name brand camera equipment. So in their catalogs and in their stores, you can see products from Olympus, Minolta, Pentax, and even, even Practica, even a, a USSR made camera was sold at Penny's. They sold these alongside of their own branded products, which they called J.C. Penny coated optics, or J.C. Penny multi-coated optics, or sometimes J.C. Penny diametric, and we're going to take a look at some of the lenses they offered under those brand names. And here we have they they had a pretty much a standard offering of lenses when it came to their own brand, and of course they didn't manufacture any of this stuff. They all, they were just rebranding it from mostly Japanese manufacturers that were trying to get their foothold in the American market. So we're going to take a look at a few of the lenses they offered. And again, under their own brand, it was a limited offering because it was more of a budget. It was focused more at the budget minded consumer. And so you would got what I would consider a standard array of lenses. You would have 28 millimeter lenses, uh, 135 millimeter lenses, and then uh, some zoom lenses also, uh, 28 to 80 zoom, and a, a kind of a standard 80 to 200 zoom offering. And they had a few in each of these that they offered. What we're gonna do in this presentation is look at these lenses, try to determine who the manufacturer was of these lenses, take a few photos with them to see if they're any good, and uh, then we'll uh, let you decide if you should look for one. They're all readily available in thrift stores, secondhand stores, on eBay. Uh, you can find these very reasonably priced 
out there because there are so many of them available. And so we're going to take a look. Stay tuned. We're going to look at JC Penny lenses. The first one that lens we're going to look at is the JC Penny coated optic 28 to 80 f3.5 to f4.5 lens. This is a standard zoom that was marketed. It's like many other uh, standard format size zooms that you see. And this one is a pretty good lens when it comes to build quality. It's all metal, got a metal mount. Uh, it's got a push-pull type zoom, and so it's easy to use. It's got a relatively large diameter, 72 millimeter diameter, making it pretty good size when it comes to gathering light. Now, this lens is one that it doesn't take too long to determine who manufactured this lens. You can see from the way the style of the lens, where the lens information is on the outside of the filter ring, you can tell by the look of the lens. It looks a lot like lenses we've seen frequently at other department stores uh, marketed by Mackinon. So uh, I think it's pretty clear Mackinon manufactured this lens for pennies. And uh, we've gone over Mackinon in other, in other videos, but just, just to, uh, to give you a quick overview of, of them, they were a, a small optics company that formed in Japan after World War II. And they grew uh, through the 60s and 70s. They never got to be a large, large firm. Uh, they kind of fall off the radar in the mid 80s. And I, I, I think that's because they were just not large enough to handle the financial burden of developing autofocus lenses. But when it came to manual focus lenses, uh, these are, these are uh, capable lenses. I'm going to take a few photos with this. You take a look at it. These lenses can be had for under $20 at thrift stores, on eBay. You can find them uh, sometimes for even less than that. So take a look at some of the photos and we'll be back. The next lens we're going to look at is a standard 135-28 portrait lens. Uh, this is a lens that is branded under the JCPenney Coated Optics name. And again, well-built lens, all metal, metal mount. Uh, came in a wide array of uh, mounts. You can get it in Pentax, Olympus, Nikon, Canon. You can get it in all of the popular mounts of the time. And it's a portrait lens, and so it's great for taking pictures of, of people, of plants, of animals, pets. Uh, it's a well-built lens, and also I don't know if we can determine with a, for sure who made this lens, but it looks very similar to uh, Cosina lenses that are marketed under different brands, especially if you look at the... Uh, 13528 marketed by Vivitar that was made by Cosina. This lens looks very similar. Now, 13528s are very common lenses, and I've w heard that nobody made a bad 13528. So, this is probably going to be, if you're looking for a manual focus lens, this is probably going to be as good as any of the lenses you get out there. I'm going to take a few pictures with this lens. We'll see how it looks. Again, under the Penny's brand, you can usually get these very reasonably. Uh, a, a lens like this, probably $15 to $20 tops. So let's take a look at some pictures.
The third type lens we're going to look at from JCPenney's is their offering of 80 to 200 millimeter zooms. And they offered a couple of different options here from different manufacturers, but we're going to only look at two of them. We're going to take a look first at this 80 to 200 f3.5. And looking at this lens, the style of this lens, and the build of this lens, it, it tells me that this lens is also manufactured by Mackinon. It's a, a well-built lens, all metal, got a built-in hood. F3.5, so it's a little faster than your standard 8200 budget lens. Um, it's got kind of a hybrid internal push-pull zoom. You can turn it and it goes uh, and it advances the zoom length, uh, but it also gets longer. So it's kind of a hybrid between a push-pull and a full internal zoom. As I said, metal mount, metal barrel, uh, F3.5, and um, well-built. We're going to take a few pictures with this. It is from Mackinon, as I said and we'll see how it how it performs. Also, we're going to look at this offering. This is an 80 to 200 F39 that they also uh, marketed under the JCPenney coated optics name. This lens was made in Korea, which tells me it's probably made by Samyang, the Korean optics manufacturer. They were trying to get a foothold in the United States and uh, did so by marketing to um, department stores. You'll see a very similar lens marketed by Sears. And they also did a lot of third-party uh, lenses that were rebranded. You'll see Albinar, Soligar, Hanamex, a lot of uh, Korean uh, third-party <laughs> uh, branded lenses. So. We're going to take a look at how this lens performs. So we'll look at these two zoom offerings for the, the Penny's buyer. Both of these lenses, by the way, are, uh, again, very reasonable. 80 to 200 zooms are prolific. There's just many of them out there. And these can be had very reasonably also, less than $25. Uh, at secondhand stores, thrift stores, eBay. Uh, so if you like these lenses, you're not going to have to spend a lot of money to get one. As I noted earlier, JCPenney's was a little different than the other department stores. They marketed their own store-branded photography equipment alongside OEM name brand equipment. They did this in both their catalogs and their retail stores. The strategy was probably to give consumers a choice, frame up their store brands as a little more budget, economical brand, whereas the name brand would probably command a little more of a price. We've had an opportunity to look at just a few of their lenses. They had a little uh, broader line than we looked at, and if you are interested in some of these lenses, keep looking for them. There's lots of them out there. Thanks for watching.